Before we get into today's video, I would like to thank all of my lovely channel members and especially my lovely darling stewards. Bella Mare, Husky HD, Hopeful, Mystic Jade 111, Giovanni Moretti, Twilight Mia, Angry Boxman, Hella, Melofia, Anonymous Weep, and Nicodemus D. Thank you for your support and also a huge thank you for all of my darling mates for your continued support. Now I hope you enjoy the video and please remember to like, comment and subscribe. Thank you. Gather round, brats. The time has come for nap time. Lights have been dimmed and Uncle Moon has come out to drift you off to sleep. <laughs> Naptime is a mandatory activity from 12 p.m. to 2 p.m. For further instructions, refer to your fast by Superstar Jaker manual at page 12. Your Uncle Moon has prepared an age-appropriate story to ensure your nap time is peaceful and fulfilling. As I run their complimentary blanket and pillow at the ready. Good. Good. You brats are surprisingly well behaved today. <laughs> In that case, I suppose I can read more than a singular story as a reward for being so well behaved. Now, before we get ready, brats, let Uncle Moon give you your complimentary moon drop nap time candies. Please do not consume more than one. We don't want to call emergency services. Good. I'm very pleased. You've all been very... Uh, not naughty. What is the word I'm looking for? Nice. Anyways, now let me tell you a story. Once upon a time, in a lush and vibrant forest lived a bear named Freddy. Freddy was a kind-hearted bear with a particular fondness for honey. The golden sweetness was his favorite treat, and he would do almost anything to get his paws on it. One sunny morning, Freddy woke up with a rumbly tummy and a craving for honey. He remembered a tall oak tree not far from his cave, where a beehive hung, brimming with honey. Freddy decided that today was the day he would get himself some of that delicious treat. Benny lumbered over to the oak tree and looked up at the beehive. I'll simply climb up there and get the honey, he said. And with determination, Freddy started climbing the tree. But it turned out to be harder than it expected. But he was determined. And just as he was about to reach the hive, his little foot slipped on a mossy branch. And down he rumbled and tumbled, crashing through the branches, landing with a thud on the ground. The bees buzzed amused around him, and Benny scampered away, nursing a sore bottom on a river. But Freddy wasn't one to give up easily. I'll sneak up to the hive at night when the bees are asleep with a rope, he said. So he waited until nightfall and tiptoed quietly to the oak tree. Using a rope, he threw it up to the beehive's branch, securing the rope with a rock. Freddy reached the hive without incident, and was about to dip his paws into the honey, when a curious owl hooted loudly from a nearby branch. Startled, Freddy lost his balance and accidentally knocked the hive. The bees immediately awaken, very upset, swarming out. And so Freddy was forced to flee once more. Stung and disappointed. 
On the third day, Freddy thought to himself, I've seen humans use smoke to calm bees. I'll try that. Maybe then they just give me the honey. So he gathered up some dry leaves and twigs and started a small fire near the hive, fanning the smoke towards it. At first it appeared to be working. The bees started to calm down and Benny cautiously approached the hive. When suddenly, a strong gust of wind blew the smoke away and the beasts immediately realizing the danger they were in. And once again, they chased him off, starting to be sick of his little game. It used to be funny. Now it was annoying. Freddy, now covered in soot and bee stings, sat down and sighed. What am I going to do? He wondered. Freddy knew he needed a different approach as he sat by his favorite garden. An idea struck him. Perhaps I can offer the bees something in exchange for their honey. He looked around at his beautiful roses, which were always buzzing with bees collecting nectar. Freddy carefully picked a large bouquet of the loveliest roses and wandered back to the oak tree. Standing beneath the hive, he called up to the bees. Dear bees, I apologize for trying to take your honey without permission. I have a proposal. If you share some of your honey with me, I'll allow you to collect nectar from my rose garden whenever you like, and even deliver some to you. The bees buzzed and hummed among themselves, considering Freddy's offer. And after a while, the queen bee emerged from her hive. We accept your offer, Freddy. Freddy's heart leaped with joy. The bees flew down and presented him with a small pot of golden honey. In return, Freddy showed them the way of his rose garden which the bees visited eagerly from there on out. And so, Freddy the bear and the bees lived happily ever after, in a forest where everyone shared and cared for one another. Generating Second Story Subject Matter Selected Applying Fasper Intellectual Property Generating finished. Once upon a time, in a lush green forest, there lived a hare named Barney. Barney was known far and wide for his speed. He loved to boast about how fast he was, claiming there was no one in the forest who could outrun him. His boasting often annoyed the other animals. But Bonnie was so confident in his abilities, he didn't even notice. On a sunny day, as Bonnie was showing off his speech by darting between the trees, he came across a group of animals gathered by the river. They were talking amongst themselves, and Bonnie's curiosity got the better of him. He hopped over to see what was going on. There in the middle of the group was a little crocodile named Monty. Monty was well liked by everyone in the forest. He was not only strong and wise, but he had a gentle nature that made him approachable, even by humans. Monty was known for his long swims in the river his peaceful demeanor, but no one had ever seen him move quickly on land. Bonnie, always eager for a new challenge, couldn't resist the urge to show off. Hey, Monty, Bonnie called out. I bet you couldn't beat me in a race. The animals gasped. Everyone knew Bonnie was the fastest, but they were curious to see how Monty would respond. But to everyone's surprise, 
Monty smiled calmly and simply replied, Very well then, Bonnie. I'll take you up on that challenge. Rock and roll. The animals buzzed with excitement. They chose a course that started at the edge of the forest, crossed the meadows deep within, ending at a big oak tree by the river. The race would take place the next morning, giving everyone time to gather and watch. And the following day, the forest was alive with anticipation. Animals of all shapes and sizes gathered to see the race between Bonnie, the hare, and Monty, the crocodile. As they lined up at the starting point, Bonnie couldn't help but smirk. This is going to be easy, he thought. On your marks, get set, go, called the wise old owl who was acting as the referee. Body took off like a shot from a hunter's gun, his legs moving so fast they were a blur. He sped through the forest, confident that he would win easily. After a while, he looked back and saw that Monty was very far behind, moving at a steady but slow pace. And feeling certain of his victory, Bonnie decided to take a nap under a shady tree. I'll rest for a bit still. I can beat Monty no matter what, he thought, closing his eyes. As Monty continued to move forward at his own pace, he didn't rush or worry about how far ahead Bonnie might be. Monty knew that the race wasn't just about speed, but endurance. The sun climbed higher in the sky, and Bonnie slept soundly under the tree. Hours passed, and eventually, Monty caught up to Bonnie, who was sleeping. Monty saw Bonnie napping, but didn't stop or say a word. He just smiled as he kept moving. As the day turned to the afternoon, Bonnie finally awoke. He stretched, yawned, feeling refreshed. Time to finish this race, he said confidently, and took off towards the finish line. But, as Harry approached the big oak tree, he was stunned to see all the animals cheering and clapping already. As at the finish line stood Monty. Bonnie hung his head, realizing that his overconfidence and need to show off had cost him the race. Ugh. Congratulations, Wadje, he said humbly. You've taught me an important lesson today. Monty smiled warmly and replied, It's not always the fastest who win, Bonnie. Sometimes steady and determined wins the race. From that day on, Bonnie stopped boasting about his speed. He learned to appreciate the value of perseverance and humility. And he and Monty became good friends. Sharing stories by the river, enjoying the beauty of their home. And the animals of the forest never forgot the great race between the bunny and the crocodile. <laughs> ah... I'm very pleased with this nap time. Very much indeed. No fuss, no screams, and no refusal of my orders. <sighs> if only every nap time could be like this. <laughs> uh, fine, fine. I'll say it once. Good night, my little superstars. <laughs>